Hi everyone, so I'm still on Octopus Flux, but I now have the added complication of an electric vehicle in the mix. June has been the best month for solar generation and export, but how did charging my new Tesla Model 3 affect the bills for the month, and what's my strategy for charging it? Should I be using my excess solar to charge it for free, or should I be using the overnight cheap flux rate? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to my channel everyone. If you're new here, I'm Danny V Solar, and I talk about all things solar, renewable tech, uh, money saving and electric vehicles. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this and liking the video if you find it useful. So I've now had my 6.32 peak east-west solar panels and home battery for six months of the year. And we can start to see how it's likely to perform across the whole year and whether my original estimate of a payback of six to eight years is looking likely. June was a mostly glorious month in the northeast of England with lots of sunshine and lots of heat. Sometimes a bit too much heat and we actually saw a slight degradation in performance compared with the previous month on some sunny days throughout June. The panels also got quite dusty during the dry spell so that might have contributed to the slightly lower generation in some days as well. Make sure you let me know in the comments how your generation was for June. I'm always interested to see how others got on as well. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm still on the solar and home battery tariff called Octopus Flux. For those that don't know, this is an innovative import and export tariff created by Octopus Energy and it has three different time zones throughout the day. So it has a cheap flux period between 2 and 5 a.m. It has a day rate and then it has a peak period between 4 and 7 p.m. You can learn more about Octopus Flux in this video. And I have the current rates for the northeast on the screen for June, although they have now changed slightly as it's uh, after the 1st of July. All the rates since 1st of July have basically dropped by a couple of pence, but as this is June stats, I'm using the figures that you can see on the screen now. So let's get into it and let's start with the generation for June. This month we generated 836 kilowatt hours of solar energy, so around 80 kilowatt hours more than last month and the highest month we've had since having the panels installed in December last year. 115 kilowatt hours of that went into the home, 163 went into charging the home battery, and 557 kilowatt hours was exported back to the grid, which is definitely not a bad thing on Octopus Flux. We also had two days of the month where we had over 40 kilowatt hours of generation in one day, which is the most we've generated to date and is probably close to the maximum we can expect to generate across the day with our east west array. If we look closer at the best day for generation, this was on the 3rd of June where we generated 41.28 kilowatt hours of energy. I've also got the battery percentage showing on this graph in blue as well. I'm not sure what happened to the battery around 9am, but it suddenly dropped about 6% very quickly. Maybe we just had a few appliances on at the same time or something. Either way, the battery still hit 100% full by 10.30am. And as you can see, we had an excellent peak export rate between 5 and 7pm as well. So I think that's one thing that's really changed throughout June. I've started exporting much earlier now. So when I was previously doing it from about 5.30 to 7 or 5.45 to 7pm, I'm now exporting throughout June from around 5pm to 7pm just to maximise that export rate. Peak generation on the best day of the month was about 4.3 kilowatts and the panel started generating at about 4.30 a.m. and stopped generating at 9.30 p.m. So a brilliant long day for solar of 17 hours. For the lowest day of generation, it was 10.12 kilowatt hours on the 27th of June. And you can see where the weather started to drop off towards the end of the month a little. The peak PV power on this day was 2.6 kilowatts for a brief period and the battery was still full very early on in the day. I think this was probably due to having some decent sunshine the day before, and as my inverter is limited to five kilowatts, if there is still sunshine between the peak four and 7 p.m., then the battery only discharges a little bit of power to meet this maximum five kilowatt limit. In reality, we probably only export 4.6 kilowatts at any one time, which I believe is the um, inverter using probably the remainder of the power, so around about 400 watts to export the battery power and also manage the solar power coming into the house as well. If you have any experience with this, please let me know in the comments as I'm curious to know if this is normal behavior for the Give Energy inverters or not. On to home consumption for the month, and this is slightly tricky as we've had the added complication of my lovely new Tesla in the mix. I picked up the Tesla on the 10th of June and did a bit of granny charging a few times after I bought the car and then I had a Zappy installed on the 19th of June. Now for those that don't know, granny charging is essentially charging through a three pin plug and this can take up to 24 hours to charge a car fully. So not a quick route to do it. 
I'll have a video about the Zappi install at some point in future. One thing with the Zappi is that the power consumed through that does not show on the Give Energy app, so I've had to do a bit of consolidation between the Octopus data, the OctoAid data, and the Give Energy app to try and work out what we've used for the month. I believe this is due to the way the Zappi has been installed to ensure it doesn't drain from the battery, but I could be wrong, and it would be nice if we did have one source where we could check for the power used for the month. Anyway, onto the figures. This month's home consumption from the Give Energy data was 204 kilowatt hours. My Octopus data suggests an additional 108.38 kilowatt hours that went into the car once the Zappi was installed. And that takes us to a grand total of 312.38 kilowatt hours for the month. So quite a bit higher than my normal consumption, but mostly due to charging the car. I've incorporated the savings that the car's made into my payback calculations, but also kept them separate from the solar payback calculations as well, so we can see the difference that the two variables are made. And if we move on to export for the month, you can see that we exported 664 kilowatt hours, which beats last month's by about 80 kilowatt hours again. And this is great on Flux, which currently pays that lucrative export rate. From the export, you can see that 557 kilowatt hours went directly from the solar back to the grid and 107 kilowatt hours went from discharging the battery back to the grid as well. And this exported power is essentially helping the grid to power my neighbor's houses as well, which I always think is quite nice. Next, let's take a look at the power that the car used during June. Now, lots of learning here, much more daytime charge than I wanted to use rather than the off-peak window between two and 5 a.m. Before I had the Zappi installed because of the granny charging which as I mentioned earlier, it can estimate it take up to around 24 hours to fully charge the car. And this drained the battery really quick because that was the first place it was taking it from when I was uh, plugging it in. You can see the graph on the screen now, which shows how the granny charging affected the battery levels. Thankfully, once I got the Zappi installed, this gave me much more control over when I can charge and much faster speeds as well. To break down the usage for month, we had only 0.2% on the peak rate times between four and seven, which is great. 31% on the day rate and then 68% on the low rate, so still overall mostly two thirds on the low rate, but room for improvement I think, which will hopefully show in next month's figures. So that gave us a grand total of exactly £30 for charging the car during June. It's difficult at this point really to measure the total savings as I did have a supercharge at one point and also charged at work as well. But on the face of it to compare, I was pretty consistent with when I filled my car up with diesel and I would have spent about £160 this month on fuel. Now, you might be wondering why I wouldn't just charge the car from the excess solar that was generated from the solar panels. But the way the flux pricing structure works, I can basically import the power at around 19 pence per kilowatt hour during the night and then export that during the day at 21 pence per kilowatt hour. So it actually makes more sense for me to charge the car overnight during that window and then export that power instead of going into the car during the day. Right, onto the complicated spreadsheet for this month. There's every chance I've made a mistake somewhere on this, so if you do spot anything, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get it corrected. But hopefully, I've consolidated as best I can and there's no mistakes. I've included the consumption from the granny charging in my house consumption as well, so I don't think it massively shifts the figures. But if we look for the month, we have a home consumption, uh, we're excluding the car of 204.05 kilowatt hours for the month. Import is 45.4 kilowatt hours from the grid and the rest is supported by the battery. The import cost equates to 10 pounds and 52 pence for this month. And the generation in kilowatt hours is 836. If we look at the export part, 664, which equates to 172 pounds and 87 pence worth of export sent back to the grid. So that's amazing. And the cost without solar would have been 69 pound and 38 pence. The cost with solar minus 162 pounds and 35 pence. So if we look at the overall savings, that's £231.73 and pence for the month, which is even better than May, so that's amazing. And the cumulative savings now, we're up to £784.17, and pence, which leaves a remaining payback of £10,195.83. And, and I've also added the car usage on the bottom here as well. So as you can see, I've used 108 kilowatt hours to charge the car this month. Um, which equated to bang on £30. If we look at the equivalent diesel cost per litre, I'm assuming a rate of 145, which is around about what diesel is at the moment in my area. And I was filling up twice per month. Uh, I used to fill up around 55 litres, so that equates to 
106 pounds and 33 pence for the month it would have been more but i've essentially knocked that down to what i would pay for two-thirds of the month since i only had the tesla for two-thirds of the month as well so that equates to fuel savings of around 76 pound and 33 pence for the month like i say i had a supercharge in there and also a charge at work so the reality is the savings probably weren't quite that much but i would estimate it's still around 40 to 50 pound savings for this month so if we look at the total monthly savings of the fuel costs and what i'd saved by having the solar we're looking at around about 308 pound and six pence which equates to 860 pound and 50 pence cumulative savings if we include the fuel and leaves the remaining payback at 10,119 and 50 pence so very very close to uh, getting into four figures hopefully we'll hit that figure next month if we look at the bills overall for the month we've used very little gas again this month only to heat the water for showers really so that equated to 11 pound and 16 pence for the month including standard charges and if we add the electricity standard charges on there as well then that brings the total overall bill for the month to minus £117.11, which is great considering that fueled up quite a bit of the car's usage as well. So after six months of the year, we've saved around £784 on our bills by having solar panels and battery installed. If we just look at those savings in isolation and exclude the car. Now, one thing I'm considering is for these usage figures, I've been using the standard flexible tariff of around 34 pence at the moment per kilowatt hour. If I bought an EV and I didn't have solar panels, chances are I would move to something like Octopus Go or Octopus Intelligent. So I'll need to have a rethink about how I do these figures next month, I think. And overall, if you assume we'll save around about the same throughout the rest of the year from the solar panels, then you're looking at an annual saving of around about 15 to 1600 pounds a year. So that figure looks a little bit lower than the 2000 that I mentioned in this video here. But if we include those EV savings, chances are we would meet that easily. And if we extrapolate that 1,560 figure across the following years, uh, we get a payback of pretty much bang on seven years. So right within that time window that I was looking at. I think my plan is to run with Flux for the next few months and then assess whether it's worth moving to Core Intelligent as the days get shorter and the solar generation decreases. I also like to look at these charts as well. So the first one shows the increase in generation throughout the first half of the year, although we'll obviously start, see this start to plateau now. And the second graph, which shows the lowest generation days in orange, which you can see the lowest for June was still double that of May. The average figures for generation for the months are in yellow and the highest days are in green. So I think that about sums it up for this month. If you'd like to join Octopus Energy, please consider using my referral link that's on the screen now. If you sign up using that link, you will get £50 added to your account when you join, and I also get £50 as well. Thank you to everyone that has used that link so far, it really is appreciated. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.